Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you. I want to thank you for your loving kindness. And I ask that this evening you will speak to us the word of the Lord. And you will challenge us. You will cause us, oh God, to realize those things that we know not. I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be healing, there will be miracles. You will transform each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father, for I pray in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen well. Amen. At times people shout amen at this, it's like uh, the scarcity of uh, Naira or dollars. Can we shout a big amen? amen? Are we buying this one again? Is it Nepa Bill? Is it Tomato Bill? <laughs> How many of you are in trunk A? Eh? You are paying A bill. Those guys are liars. Dangerous. But the Lord. Can I hear somebody say, but the Lord. Amen. I'll be talking tonight. Who art thou? Who art thou? Can I see all the workers in training stand up? The ones on train. Only four of you or five of you came. What are the rest of the workers in training? What are they doing there? Huh? How many of them? Let them come up. Let me see them. All oh. The workers in training. Let me see what I'm shooting at. Because you can tell me they are there, why they are not there. So I have only five workers in training. Huh? Yes. Sit down. I've marked you down. Who art thou? Amen. What a question. Who art thou? They come to ask you questions. Please, can we know who you are? Now, I want to say, if somebody comes to you and say, who are you? And you say to him, I am Christopher Iruemulo. How many of you are aware that my name or my names alone is not my full identity? I want you to cooperate with me tonight. Praise God. But if I come to you and say to you, I am Apostle Chris Iremolo. I am from Oweke in Boji Boji town 
and cannot its local government from best state in Nigeria. How many of you know I've given you my full identity? Praise God. Amen. Now, that may indeed form your opinion. Praise God. Now, I want to call um, uh, who can lend me him or herself there? Anybody? Nobody want to lend me? Have I come to you? One other person who will lend me you. Praise God. Okay. I have two people now. All right. I want to give you a typical example. Now, I have two persons here. Now, this one, your name again? Ruth and Kali. Is that true? The father is the IGP of Nigeria. Praise God. And she is a PhD holder by qualification. Praise God. And this one, the father is Alaji Namtari. And uh, he's a farmer living in Otoro village. Praise God. Amen. Sincerely speaking, how would you look at these two persons? You know, here, yeah, many of you will tell lies now. Huh? How many of you are aware that this man just the way you will regard him based on his identity. He's a child of a farmer from Otoro village. But this one is living in Abuja. In Maitama. The father is the IGP. You see those five policemen there. It's because of that they escorted her here. Now, I want to ask you a question. Stand up. And she just came out and said, don't be stupid. Will you take offense? <laughs> Can we be frank? Will you take offense? He will take offense. If this man passes through and said, and said to you, good afternoon, will you take offense? Why? This one they didn't greet you. Even insulted you, but you couldn't take offense. But this one just even quack you and say, Africa, and pass. And you had to take offense. Why? See now, we all know why. Because he has said to you his identity, and the father is from Otoro village, and he's a farmer. As long as you are consigned. It's not witty. What did I did you hear me? It's not witty. But this one came with that pathfinder and with a vehicle in front, rolling some things on top of it. And this policemen there, their guns are ready, any fly around her. For if this man had barely said, they will just bring out down his hands. Now, because of the father, and he's the daughter of IGP of the nation, you owe her some level of respect. Is that true? Amen. And the reason is because you have identified who she is. And she has identified to you who she is. And so you have no choice than to respect her. Praise God. Amen. Because of their identity. Put your hands together as they go back. God bless you. 
Now, how many of you are aware that your very identity can also put you in trouble? Huh? How many of you are aware? Some people say, I got out. I don't believe it. If it's true, um, you wouldn't have. I, I, I didn't see the cash she brought, sir. I, I think uh, it was uh, I told each other I dropped her. But yet, what she told you is who she is. Is that true? Praise God. Amen. Who art thou? Now, the who art thou I'm asking now is not what people know you, it's what you know about yourself. What I know now about myself will form my opinion. Your opinion here doesn't matter. It's my opinion. Now, my courage, my courage, my behavior, my attitude is based on who I know that I am. Are you with me now? Amen. Now, listen. That is the cut of Mark. And that will determine your position on earth. The way you, you think about yourself, what will form your courage, your behavior. How many of you are aware complex is a dangerous disease that can ruin an individual? Inferiority complex can destroy a PhD holder that he can't even speak in the midst of his fellow colleagues. Not that he doesn't know what to say, but you know what? He has not been able to form his own identity. And because he's not conscious of his identity, no one regards or respects him because he lacks self-courage and because of what? The complexity in his life. How many of you are aware if you see somebody who is confident of himself, you know, Am I talking? You know. His head is above. Yes. He's so sure of himself. The physical height is not the issue. It's what that person carries inside. That makes the person stand tall and far and above others. Not that he has the physical height. Because of what is within. I have seen personalities run for morons. And because of fear. Your identity is very important in the hour and in the days that we are. And until this understanding is clear to us, we might not go too far on the earth. John chapter 5 verse 17 to 18. But Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. 
Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath but said also that God was his father making himself equal with God. Please look up here. How many of you are aware that Jesus didn't open his mouth and say, I'm equal with God? Did he say that? Come and talk to me. Did he say that? But he said, God is my father. They couldn't comprehend that. But that was his right identity. He said, my father walk and I walk in at him. And the Bible says, because of his identity, they hated him the more. His identity was his problem. That was what attracted hatred. Number one, they believe he's not what he says he is. But the truth is that what he said to them is what he is. Was what he uh, is what he is. Praise God, and that attracted what hatred. Jesus knew who he was. That was the greatest challenge of the devil. Ah! You say you are the son of God. It was a big challenge to the devil. But the devil knew that was the truth. But why did you say that? He made the people believe it's not what he said he is. He is. Praise God. But he was aware of his own identity. And he told them, this is my identity. And they could not comprehend. They were angry with him. If Jesus had said something that is a lie, that would be what? A lie. But he told them truly, this is who I am. And he did not end there. He said, my father walk and I walk the same way. That is whatever you see my father do. That the same thing I do. I am like my father. I can't identify with something else. I have just told you who I am. That's my identity. And because that is my identity and I know my identity, I can prove it. You didn't hear me there. Let me say this. Until we are conscious of our identity in Christ, we cannot gain command to operate on earth. I repeat. We cannot gain command to operate on earth until we are conscious of our identity in Christ. Until we are conscious of our identity in Christ as a believer. What and who you are in Christ. What the word of God says you are. Until you identify with that. You will never gain command on this earth. Until you identify it, what should fear you, you will fear. Because you don't know your identity. And that's why the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They have not identified who they are in him. I 
And because of that, they operate lower than their dimension or their, their level. Because they have not been able to identify who they are in him. John 8, 58 to 59. Jesus said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Is that true? Is that true? Now he told them the truth. What happened next? Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus did himself, hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Why did they want to stone him? Because of his identity. That was the problem. But that was the truth. Though they tried to stone him, were they able to stone him? They couldn't. He told them the truth of who he is. Who art thou? That is the question you have to answer today. Who art thou? Until you are able to know who you are in Christ. It's possible that the edge can permit you. John 10, 34. John 10, 34. To 39. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. 35 now. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Can we please stop right there? Let's have church. He said to them, it is written, ye are gods. And he said, if he called them gods, to whom? The scripture came to. Or to whom the word of God came. And he said the scripture cannot be broken. The word of God came. And let them know their position in God. You are a partaker of his divine nature through the knowledge. Via the word of God you were told that you are a child of God. Via the word of God when it was preached there was conviction and you got born again after your first being born. And the Bible says the day you got born again your identity changed. You now have identity with divinity. Did you hear what I said? You have been lifted to a realm of divinity. And he said, if he calls them God to whom the word of God came, he said, the scripture then cannot be broken. 
Because the word of God that came made them same. So how can you break the scripture because they say, ye are gods. That was not the end. The next verse. That is his now. Say ye of him, if that is true for them, say ye of whom whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. If those people, by reason of the word that came to them, they became gods. And you are talking about him that the father has sanctified and sent into the world that blasphemy because I said, I am the son of God. The next verse. If I do not, <laughs> because in this thing, there is a doing aspect. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. If I refuse to manifest who I said I am. Did you hear that? If I do the works of my father. No, but yes. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. If I do not the work of my father, don't believe who I say I am. Did you hear what I said? Somebody say identity. Now the next verse. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in him. If you don't believe what I said to you, believe in the works. If I can't manifest who I say in him, who I say I am, don't believe me. Praise God. But believe. Why? Believe the word. Go and believe that, I, that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hands. All was because of his identity. They fight him in vain because he told them the truth. Hear me. Revelation will bring wahala to your life. Revealed knowledge will cause the enemy to focus on you, but yet you will defeat them all. Praise God. Amen. Who are thou? Now, if you watch, Jesus was not afraid to tell them of who he is. When they try to get him, he vanishes. Now listen. It came to a time. He said to them, why? They said to him, why are you keeping us between two opinions? Tell us who you are. Has he not told them who he is? They wanted him to say something contrary to who he is. You are who you are. But the problem is, do you know who you are? Because if you know who you are, and you are sure of who you are, you will not be afraid to declare your identity to the people.
I repeat, until we are conscious of our identity in Christ, we cannot gain command to operate on earth. You cannot. I am on earth here representing the nation. The day I got born again, I came into the classification of divinity. I became one that cannot come under any arrest of any power or demon. But I must recognize the fact of who I am in him. And I must walk in that consciousness if I'm to have command and operate on this earth the way I ought to operate. I must agree and know my identity my real identity. Hear me. Come. Jacob, how are you? This is Jacob. This is Jacob. Jacob is surmountable. Jacob is killable. Jacob can be stoned, can be humiliated. The earth could call Jacob. Jacob can be afraid. But when Jacob came to realize that he's not just Jacob, he is Israel. Kabali. Undu Bubu said, when he was informed, I won't let you go except your blessing. Except you change my destiny. Except you make me realize who I am. What is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. A man with power with God and with man that have prevailed. That was the end of his problem on the earth. The man who was looking for him to kill him, him having realized of who he is, O Kalalubahaya, Esau came. Esau met Israel. He did not see Jacob. And they both began to cry. The man you are looking for to kill is before you. You offered to give him your soldiers to even escort him. All the offenses he committed against you were swallowed in victory. Because his identity have been changed. Are you hearing me? A man with power with God and with man has prevailed. And because he has prevailed, when the brother came, he prevailed over his brother. Shout hallelujah. God knew there will be famine. He sent a man ahead of him that he might preserve for him posterity. You know why? Who he is? His identity. He can, he said, in famine and in destruction, thou shalt laugh. Are you a child of God? God is waiting for you to realize truly of who you are in him. You get to know your identity. 
Jacob that was hiding became another man. What was pursuing him was now willing to help him. He did not discuss the issue of his birthright. Listen. It took God to save Jacob from the hands of Laban. Is that true? For when Jacob identifies his correct identity, God did not appear in the scene. Because he has now under, come to understand who he is. Oh God. He was working with that mentality, the consciousness of who his present status. A prince that had power with God and with man and his prevail. I was praying and asking the father, what should I tell them? I had a different thing in mind. He said, ask them, who are thou? And after I put down what God told me, I was discussing with my wife. I had a voice that said to me, sit down, write down immediately. We came down from my vigil and I began to write. That's how this message came. I had no mind over this message at all. And I went around five o'clock to hit my head on the bed. An angel appeared to me and said some dangerous things to me. Who are thou? It's not who they know. It's who you know. Who, what do you know about yourself? Who are thou? Who The revelation of our identity is our greatest asset. Your greatest asset. Because it positions us for dominion in the issues of life. It positions me on the issues of life. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore laying aside, no, no. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had caught you out of darkness into the marvelous light, into his marvelous light. Now listen, somebody say he has chosen me that I should show forth his praise. Now I want you to know that there's no man that can show forth the praise of God in poverty, in ill health, in barrenness, in anything contrary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible says you are a chosen generation. Do you believe? what the scriptures says that you are. That I have been called out of darkness. In other words, I have been called out of sickness. I have been called out of disease. I have been called out of evil. The Bible says, if you will serve the Lord, if you identify with the Lord, when you become a child of the living God, he said, I will bless your bread, I will bless your water, I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. You know why? Because you have identified with him. Listen. 
it will affect your way of thinking. It will what? Affect your way of thinking. The way of the re you reason, it will affect it. It will affect it. Praise the Lord. That is who he said I am. I'm chosen. I'm an uncommon material. Am I conscious of this? John 1 4. Who art thou? In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Listen. In who? In Christ. The Bible says it was what? Life. And that life is what? The light of men. Hear me. I am carrying Zoe. God's kind of life is what I carry. And that life guides my step is the light of men with which I walk. Friends, I carry God's life. I didn't say it. That is what he said about me and I agree with him. And I'm conscious of the life I carry. And because I am conscious of the life I'm carrying, it affects my mentality, my reasoning. You can't put me down because I am up. You don't have what it takes to bring me down. Not in any form or in any manner. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. We are not all the same. I have Zoe. I carry Zoe. God can some kind of life. If I carry God kind of life, if you cannot delay God, you can't delay me. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I'm saying? Because I, I have the life of God is in me. If you can't detain God, you can't detain me. If you can't impoverish God, you can't impoverish me. If you cannot do anything to God, you cannot do anything to me. Because that is the life I carry. It's unlimited life. But listen, am I conscious of this identity? I'm going to crusade. I'm preparing already. By tomorrow, I don't know, the ham posters and ham beans ought to be out. And you said to me, it's the time, raining season. I'm aware it's the raining season. But the life I carry controls season. Praise God. The life I carry controls what? Season. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The revelation of identity is our greatest asset because it positions us for dominion in the issues of life. I want to show you Daniel chapter 5 verse 14.
I have even heard of thee. But the spirit of the gods is in thee. And that light and understanding, that light has come again. And understanding and excellent wisdom is found where? In thee. Oh my God. May you not allow agent of darkness to know who you are, but you are blinded of who you are. The king was told about this man and the workings inside him. The much of his understanding, he said, the spirit of the gods are in you. I have heard the light. You are a carrier of light. He was telling Daniel, what I have heard about you. That you are a carrier of light. And the Bible says the life in me is the light of man. And he said. An understanding and excellent wisdom is found in the look at verse 16 of that scripture. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretation and dissolve doubts because of what is in you, because of who you are. You have the ability to dissolve doubt, to have an answer to every problem, to give interpretation. That will work, cause someone to walk from darkness into light. So you can dissolve doubt. You are a dangerous man. Praise God. That was what he said about him. But the issue, do you know that about yourself? The devil does not have any power. But listen. The word of God paints the picture of our person. And that is the platform for our dominion and authority. What the word of God says that you are. The Bible says it paints the picture of our person. And that is the platform. That painting of the, of the word of God is the platform for our dominion and our authority. Is the platform. What has the word of God says about you? Believe it. Walk in that consciousness. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Do you believe that? Say, as many that receive him, he gave them power to become what? Sons of God. Have you believed? Your identity was changed the day you believed. Hallelujah. The day you believe. I want you to look at Romans chapter 8, 16 and 17. Romans, the book of Romans. The Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Please, do you believe that you are a child of God? Just like I brought out the daughter of the IGP. And no one could speak to her anyhow because of, the, ch of the, the child of who she is. And the Bible says, you are a child of God. I say, I did not minister in spirit sent forth to minister for them that shall be heads of salvation. Every one of you here seated here, if you are born again, you have quite a number of angels that go with you anywhere you go. 
you are not ordinary and the reality of that thing will never be made manifest until you are conscious of that truth and walk in that consciousness you will never realize it. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs, you know what that means? I have a right of, to own the properties of God. I'm a joint heir with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we might be, might be also glorified together. I'm a joint heir. He has access to the Father. And the Bible says, on the platform I stand upon, the word of the living God said, I am like my brother Jesus. I have access to those things that belongs to my Father. I have access to them. Those things that belongs to my Father, I have access to them. Praise God. The Bible says, Proverbs 30 verse 30. Proverbs 30 verse 30. Please put it on the screen. A lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. And the Bible says, that my senior brother, his name is Jesus, and he's also called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise God. If you read the book of Numbers, even Revelation, now even Deuteronomy, you see what God said about Judah when he spoke about the lion's way. is your father. You are a carrier of Zoe. If he's referred as lion of the tribe of Judah, you are a lion. You turn not away for any. You don't run from enemies. They run from you. But do you believe what he said you are? He said, you are the head and not the tail. Do you believe it? That in the midst of the situation of this country, you still have your head tall. In the house, I made a statement. He said, if need be, heaven will intervene. Praise God. Joshua fought a battle to a dimension. He said, no, this enemy must be vanquished. He stood and told the sun to stand still and the moon, to, nothing goes down until this battle is over and God honored his voice. And that's an Old Testament sense. And the Bible says, you are in a better covenant than the covenant they were. But you know what? They believe the gods, the Sah, Jehovah. And God honored their faith. Have you been able to know who thou art? Hallelujah. Have you been able? First John. Chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. First John. Behold, what manner of law the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the word knoweth not because it knew him not. If the word did not know, but you should know. Did you hear what I said? If the word, had, they don't know your identity, you should be able to know who? Your own identity We are called the sons of God. 
and we should be able to manifest his sonship. He said, I, I have tried. That's why you fail, because you try. But I don't try. What I am, I don't try. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If you are rich, then you try to be rich. Huh? If you are trying to be rich, that means you are not rich. But if you are too rich, you know you are rich. That's all. Is anybody with me now? So if you are trying to be, no, I am. I am what the word of God says I am. That is the platform on which I stand to execute and carry out the assignment and everything I do on the earth, on the platform of what the word of God says I am. The picture painted by the world, and that is the picture that carries me through. And so when I think of tomorrow, I know I have a bright tomorrow. How do you know? I just know. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. I went up there. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. Somebody say, he causes us to do what? You will triumph. You will triumph. I say you will triumph. It doesn't matter what they are saying, what they are doing. You will triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. In Christ. God set us to triumph in Christ. Are you in Christ? And make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Not in some place. Every place. That is the world. The question is who am I? Who at that? Hallelujah. Who at that? Who at that? Who at that? Have you been able to identify what the picture of the word of God has painted about your person? Have you been able to identify it? Because he has painted a picture of who you are. Who God says you are. Listen. You say you have revelation. Revelation you say you have. If you are not living that revelation, it's stupid. It's useless. Revelation. The word of God says this is who you are. I made a statement. I said the secret of playing a part in what he has said is to think yourself into it. The word of God said this is who I am. And I say that is who I am. I agree with him. And I walk in that realization. There is always expectation in any rough situation that God will make a way of my escape. It's always there. Because that is what he said. He said, in every difficult situation I find myself, a pathway will be created for my escape. All I need to do is to begin to see the next thing he will do. Because I know he can do anything. Praise God. Tell them to go forward. All they saw was see. But 
before Israel was born, a pathway has been created in that sea. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. Praise God. So whatever God uttered about you, he has seen the situation that will come. And God did not consider that situation as anything. And that is why he has made a declaration concerning you. So anybody now speaking for you or against you now is a waste of time. Because the ancient of days have spoken. Praise God. You are limitless. You are created to show forth his praise on earth. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And in that kingdom, dwelleth no evil. Because poverty is evil. Sickness is evil. Barrenness is evil. Anything bad can, is never found in that place. What mentality do you carry? A man was in a meeting and the name of that man is Benson Andrew Idahosa. The pastor preached and said, you can raise the dead. You can make cripples to walk. You can cast that devil. Idahosa stood up and said, excuse me sir, what did you say now? Repeat what you said now. He said, yes. You can raise the dead. You can make cripples walk. You can cast a demon. He said, Pastor, excuse me. Is he talking about me? He said, yes. Said, Pastor, excuse me. Is he talking about this? Is it to me too? He said, yes. He said, Pastor, have you done it? He said, not yet. He said, show me where it is. He read it and carried his bicycle from church. He left the church, carried his bicycle and went from a house to house. Is there any man dead here? They said, no. Is there any man dead here? Now, I want to ask you. He had what others did not hear. You didn't hear what I said. May you be the one that we hear what others did not hear. Is there anyone dead here? Is there anybody dead here? And they say to him, What are you looking for? Why are you looking for the dead? He said, Because my pastor asked me to raise them up. And I have come. Hey, there's nobody dead here. Okay, I'm going to another place. He finally got to a home where a young lady, young girl died. And he said, glory to God. He believed what the pastor said. He told them, don't bother about burying the dead. I'm here. They said, what? I? He said, my pastor asked me to go and raise them up. Baby, rise up in Jesus' name. Baby, young lady, rise up now in the name of Jesus. In the house, I said, he died the mom. He began to cry. Baby, you must rise up. He's opened the Bible where the pastor read. He read it. After reading it, he turned to the baby. Baby, and he, no, he called the parents. He said, excuse me, what is the name of your child? The one in the Bible is a, a damsel. That, he thought that damsel is a name. The, name. the one in the Bible is damsel. What is the name of, he said, Inuata. And he said, Inuata, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, come alive. And he sneezed and came alive. He jumped up. He said, I tried it by mistake. It worked by right. Praise God. Listen, he had the word from his pastor. 
He moved in the consciousness of that world and God honored the simplicity of his faith. Listen to me. Who art thou? God. We read the Bible so that we'll be able to know who we are. It's the manual of our production. Believe what God said you are. It doesn't matter the raging battle. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I may not see, but he sees for me. Praise God. Who art thou? I want you to bow your head. Talk to God. God spoke to you and said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper because you are my child. The Bible says he became poor that you might be rich because you are his child. I am what God says I am. You are what the word of God says you are. Think of what he says about you. Not what you feel or what the word says you are. If you walk by what you think you are, or what the world made you to believe you are, you will die before your time. But if you walk by what the word of God says you are, you stand on that platform, you will go places on the earth. I am too conscious of the ministry spirits that walk with me. Because I was told they are there with me. I am a representative of heaven. And soldiers were given to me to take messages to heaven and bring them messages to
the Lord. Can you see the Lord? I see the Lord. He is highly lifted up. Oh, and his strength filled the temple. He is highly lifted up. Oh, Lord, and his strength filled the temple. Sing it loud. Yeah.
Father, I lift up my hand before these ones. Is there any sick among them? Is there anyone marked out for death? Is there anyone marked out for evil? Today, I overrule. By the power of the Holy Ghost, every evil handwriting against your life is thereby nullified, 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 nullified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil wall standing against your progress, every ancient wall, I collapse it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lose you from the chains of wickedness. Let every power from your father's house and your mother's house pursue you today. I command them to let you go right now. Let them go right now. Let them go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil mark upon your head, upon any part of your body, today is ever erased by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I destroy the powers of the enemy. I destroy any power challenging your life, your destiny, let that power somersault and die. I command that sickness die in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that pain to vanish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are set free. You are set at liberty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name. Powers contending against your finances contending against your finances contending against the works of your hands contend, contending against your future and destiny I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus I command that power to lose his grip and hold from your life, from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ you are set free you are set at liberty my father begin to order their steps. My father, begin to order their steps in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. Our beloved ones that traveled to Kotek Pene are already there. I call them and we give God